What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, the 4th of July, 2018. I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the Rogue One, Gary Witta, because it is Witta Wednesday. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of well, you've July got an American to you. and a Brit hosting oh God, on the 4th of July. We're, we're I guess that means right. you have to beat the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, no, nah, no, nah, I wouldn't I should have won been, red. It's been a while that me and you have done this together. I always enjoy hosting with you, so yeah. I'm glad to be here today, this, even this though this should be, be a day off. Why are we even here? I don't know, man. I you just got You just got to pay we, the bills. We just gotta, I just want to talk to you so bad. Well, I'm, How, I'm, how's your I'm glad soccer to be here. going? That's it's going great. Thing. I'm still it wearing is? the shirt. Yeah. Which this, when, 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 Next time I'm in, if I'm not wearing the shirt, you know something went wrong. Got it. But okay. I'll keep wearing the shirt as a good luck charm. We won yesterday. Okay. Congrats. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the very dramatic penalty shootout, mm -hmm. but it was very dramatic. I was uh, bouncing off the walls at home watching it. Um, England have a terrible, terrible record. Lost, we lost six out of the last seven penalty shoot, shootouts in the World Cup um, and haven't won one since... Jeez, I don't even remember how long. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, so you're feeling good. We won one yesterday. Okay. And that was just the the kind of the psychological breakthrough that we needed. And yeah. everyone was very happy. And we play Sweden on Saturday, and we'll see what happens. We had we had prom a couple days ago, and I yes, heard that you, I were, there. you were out and about going and watching the games with people. Oh, yeah. So some of the best friends uh, had plans to watch the uh, England versus Belgium game. Uh, at a bar down by uh, the baseball park. And I went because I was looking for a place to go and I got it's to awesome. meet some of the best friends and it was good. Yeah. Saw them all again at prom. It was mm -hmm. great. Yeah, fun yeah. at prom. I had a great time at prom. As, as, as I walked in, I saw you um, You were on stage rapping, so I knew it was a it was a good omen. <laughs> it was the first thing that I yeah. saw. Okay, You're we're like, going right, to... This, this is going to be fun. Spent most gonna of the time fun. hanging out in the VIP because, you know, I'm a, uh -huh. very, I am a very important person. <laughs> very important person. Gary Witter, you know But I, I, got mean? To see lots of, I got to see lots of good friends. It was like high school reunion for me because lots of people there from the game industry that I wouldn't usually get to see. Yeah. You guys obviously had a great time. That was such a I mean, I mean, I'm sure you've already talked about it a bunch so yeah. between, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, between yeah. then and now, but... The one thing we haven't talked about too much that I, I, I want to have a quick discussion about is our coffee maker that mm. broke that needs a firmware update, or got updated somehow. Okay. Which first off, that just upsets me, because why does our coffee maker, our Keurig, need an update? And what did the update do? It made the system not be able to use a bunch of different pods. Right. So the coffee pods we have, it's like, oh, these aren't compatible. Right. Like, Fuck you, yeah they are. <laughs> We've used them for three years now. <laughs> you can't just be like, nah, there's a QR code that we just don't fuck with. I don't enjoy that, but you're telling me this is even more bullshit going on in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Everything needs an update now. My coffee mug needed an update this week. What does that even mean? So I bought I, I bought a mug. It's called an Ember. And I think it was a Kickstarter or a Indiegogo, one of these, you know, crowdfunded things. And it's a good idea for it. See, here's the thing. I make my coffee in the morning. And the mornings are pretty hectic because i got to get my kid to school and everyone's running around. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I make my coffee. But by the time I actually get back to drinking it, it's already going cold. And I only ever drink half a cup of coffee in the morning because I get a few sips of the, of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I get back to it, the second half has gone cold and te nobody likes tepid coffee. No. Put it in the microwave, you can heat it up, but it's never as no. good afterwards. And so there's a mug you can get and um, it's Bluetooth. It syncs up to your phone with an app. And it has a heating element. It's a ceramic mug. Do you get to choose like how hot it is? Yeah, so it looks like a regular coffee mug. Um, but it's got a surround, it's got a heating element inside of it, and it syncs up to your phone with a little thermostat on it. And I, dict I, I can set different beverages, so I want my tea to be this hot. I want my coffee to be that hot. Yeah. If I'm, if I, you know, my wife puts soup in it. You're getting crazy. Oh my God, soup. Yeah, you can drink like, you know, like, you know, like cup of soup. Yeah. Um, and you can, you can, you know, say so if you're putting tea in it, okay, set it to the tea temperature. I like my tea this hot. Set it to the coffee temperature. I like my coffee that hot. And it does it, and it works. And it's actually a really strange experience uh -huh. to pick up uh, a coffee mug that you've left for about an hour and drink the last sip of coffee, but it's as hot as the first one was. My That's God. a totally revelatory so, experience. But it needs updates and stuff? Every now and again, it's got to be updated. And I if guess you don't the update it, are you fussed? I guess somehow the thermodynamics of keeping coffee hot, the rules change at some point, <laughs> and they've got to update the they firmware. they got to figure it out. Like, oh, shit, coffee, crazy advancements oh, shit, coffee, coffee doesn't technology. cool down the way it did last week. <laughs> we got to change it. But Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every weekday right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny games we get together and talk about all the biggest video game news of the day you can watch it live on twitch or you can get the video on demand on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or you can get it on podcast services around the globe by going to whatever it is whether it's spotify or beyond pod or apple itunes whatever uh and searching for kind of funny games daily we appreciate your listens your views your comments everything if you want to be part of the show 
kindofunny.com slash KFGD to squat up, write in for the, the listener mail and all of that. Or if we get something wrong during the show, you can go to kindofunny.com slash you're wrong and uh, we'll correct ourselves at the end of the show thanks to your beautiful corrections. We'll correct ourselves before we wreck ourselves. That's what we're going to do, Gary. There you go. I like where you're you at. Like I, like your, I like your energy today. Uh, little housekeeping. Greg Miller is gone still. He's in Montreal. He's doing a meetup tomorrow, July 5th, from 5 to 8 p.m. at Lay Terminal in good old Montreal. And uh, this episode of Games Daily is sponsored by Marvel Puzzle Quest, but I'll get to that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We only got three news stories today. A baker's dozen. Is that and I'm because be it's honest, a holiday today? It's because it's the 4th of July. Everyone I'm checked be out honest early yesterday. You, we really only have two news stories, and then there's one one thing that I'm, I just put on there because I wanted more. But it's going to be fun, though. We're going to have fun. The first one comes from Giuseppe Nelva at DualShockers. Uh, Nintendo says it's 2018. is not fully revealed yet. Oh. Nintendo recently hosted its general meeting of shareholders and former president Tatsumi Kimishima, who was on his last meeting in the role, and he was asked if the instability of the semiconductor market is going to influence the Switch's production or its price this year. Uh, this is in reference to last year where there was the issues with uh, the memory chips and cards for the okay. Switch, so they weren't able to make physically make enough systems. Okay. Uh, Kimishima, Kimishima San mentioned that the plan remains to ship 20 million shipments of the Switch in the current fiscal year between April 2018 and March 2019, and there are no problems in securing the required production volumes. While it's true that the price of parts is affected by fluctuations, negotiations are undergoing to are undergoing to any impact on the production cost of these 20 million units. Senior Executive of Officer Sasumi Tanaka added that the last year there was indeed difficulties in procuring components such as memory, but by sharing the momentum of the Switch hardware and Nintendo's plans with manufacturers, he feels it's easy to collaborate to solve that issue. Regarding production volumes in the current fiscal year, Tanaka-san also expects that it will be possible to produce the predicted number of units. Kimishima-san was also asked about Nintendo's presentation at E3 and the fact that it caused a sharp decline in the stock value. Oh, I didn't know that. I looked into this. Uh, Nintendo stock was down almost 7% after the E3 showcase. Oh, wow. He explained that the company is preparing uh, to disclose more information to the customers at an appropriate timing, including products that will be launched during the year-end shopping battle. So he said it's not yet time to announce the full lineup. That being said, he listed the games that will be released before the end of the fiscal year, mentioning that it's a powerful lineup. Um, so this obviously implies that we're probably going to see a Nintendo Direct sometime soon, mm -hmm. kind of fleshing out the rest of the, the holiday plans Nintendo has. Uh, we know already Super Mario Party in October. Well, in September, we got the online launching that has all oh, the, the right, NES right. games. I'm excited about that. Yeah, me too. Then uh, Super Mario Party in October, uh, which looks like a return to form for the Mario Party franchise. I'm very excited about that. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee in November, and then Super Smash Brothers Ultimate in December. When you look at just Smash Brothers and Pokemon, like those are two... That's of, a strong yeah, lineup. Like, just I those like two alone. Those two alone, I feel like, are really going to help Nintendo get to where they need to be for yeah. this $20 million. Yeah. Um, but... Adding a bunch of more things, I feel like could help them as well. And uh, we still don't have a release date for Yoshi. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, I I thought it was going to be an August game. They still could announce it for August, but I feel like they're they're quickly losing their their room window to do that. Um, but that could also just be October alongside Mario Party, or it could be September. Um, I do think that we're going to get uh, ports of Metroid Prime Trilogy HD. That would be nice. And uh, some. I made a prediction going into E3 that we we're going to see New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe ported over to the Switch. What, what makes you think that? It just makes too much sense. And when you look at the Switch's library and the Wii U's library, we're getting real low on games that haven't already been ported. Right? Yeah. And uh, that game, it, it, people were a little over it because we've seen too much 2D Mario going into that we've seen by, a lot. by the time it came out. But yeah. it's a really good game, and I feel like it's at home on Switch because of the dual Joy-Con thing and it being a multiplayer-focused game. Throw in Super Luigi U as well, yep. right? Because that That's, would presumably be all the DLC would mm -hmm. be in uh, year, all the year Luigi stuff. I don't know. I would rather I would rather see Galaxy HD remastered. Wouldn't you see that, too. Deluxe? But Galaxy it, One and Two, put them both in there. I would love there. that. I would love that more than anything. Because that's that's still my all-time favorite Mario game is Galaxy. Galaxy oh One or Two. One. 
Really? Well, I know both I are great. I think two is better than but one. one is, but you only get to experience it for the first time That's once. True. And that That's was, true. it was a special God, experience so for me. Magic. St I, I still think about the, 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 the orchestral music and oh, man. probably one of the best Mario soundtracks ever. Just, I mean, mm -hmm. WRON, the new one's fantastic. And I love New Donk City. Yeah. But Galaxy was, was a revelation. What's crazy to me about Mario Galaxy is, you know, we all played Mario 64 and it was just mind blowing. It was. Like I remember the, when it space. first, I was working on PC Gamer at the time and the guys next door at Next Generation Magazine, they were right across the way from us and we heard this commotion and we went over to see what it was and Mario 64 had just come in and again you look at it now and it looks kind of fuzzy and it doesn't look great by today's standards but you have to remember what games looked like back then we had never seen anything like it people were just completely blown away there was a magic to it and magic. What, what's crazy to me is then after growing up with that years later like a decade later uh getting Mario Galaxy and they made magic again like playing Mario Galaxy you had that feeling of yeah. I've never experienced something yeah. like this there are moments in the life of, of, of the Mario franchise where you go this is this is a, like an e epochal moment mm -hmm. and Mario, Mario 64 was I feel Galaxy was maybe Odyssey is but again like it, it didn't reinvent the world I mean more open world style but the thing about Galaxy is it always frustrated me because you have to remember we were still around in the era of HD consoles, and it mm. frustrated me that it wasn't in HD. I know people had, had, have done some magic with the PC the to make it, yeah. yeah, to make it HD. But that's what I would like. If I could, if you, if I could pick any any um, legacy Nintendo game to come on the Switch in a fully 1080p mm -hmm. deluxe format, Galaxy it would be the Galaxy two. One and Two. Man, pack. I would love that. But the argument I have for New Super Mario Bros. U, yeah, is, that would be good too. Is 2D. Uh, games, the 2D Mario games sell better than 3D Mario games. They're just more accessible. Right. And when Nintendo's trying to just ship units, when you have the trifecta of a 2D multiplayer Mario game, Pokemon, and Smash Brothers, yeah. you can't really get much better than that in terms of trying to push stuff. Add Animal Crossing to that, maybe. Uh, I'd love I mean, it. I'd love to see a new Animal Crossing. I think we'll see it next year. Okay. I think I think maybe even like first half of 2019, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it looks like Nintendo's going to have another good year. Again, this you know this is a high class problem, right? Well, we just can't make we just can't make them fast enough. That is literally the problem that you want to have in in business. Yeah, is that these things are flying off the shelves? They're doing a good job. I mean, you know, you go to a, I, I could walk into a Target right now and buy a Switch. Mm -hmm. in, in, I think in this at this point in the Wii's life cycle. That wasn't yet true. Like, mm -hmm. they, 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 could, they, they really couldn't keep them on the shelves. Yeah. Um, and the Wii was crap. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like but that's the biggest problem. But, but, but Wii everybody Sports, wanted man, Everyone wanted to play. Everybody wanted to waggle their yeah. Wiimotes, and oh it was God. a big... And until they didn't. <laughs> right. It's like they wanted it so bad, it and then it was off. like, oh, it, man. I remember that first Thanksgiving that it came out when yeah. everyone took their Wiis home with them, mm -hmm. and the fam there was all kinds of videos of you know the whole the family getting, getting broken. In. Everyone, yeah, because everyone can do this, right? Everyone knows that swinging a tennis yeah. racket, and that was the beauty of it. But that's so that's again, like I keep using the word magic, but the the we had that thing where everybody wanted to play, yeah, uh, and wanted to to do the waggle thing, like whether you're a gamer or not. The Switch is having a similar thing where you know you watch those the commercials of the Wii back in the day, and it's all these families like hanging out together, and you're like, people don't actually do that. But for the Switch, when we saw the commercials, we're all like, people don't actually hang but out they, at parties. But if you give them the yes, right product, they do. They do. Yeah. they do. And my my best friend, who is a lapsed gamer, um, like he he plays a whole bunch, but like it's for years he hasn't bought a console. Um, like he doesn't have a PS4 or a um, Xbox One. Uh, he was at a wedding and someone brought a Switch and they were playing Mario Kart and they just pulled the Joy Cons off and they were just playing. And him and his uh, fiance were like three hours in just playing Mario Kart together. They went home and like. He hit me up. He's like, Tim, I need to buy a Switch. Like, what games do I need to get? I'm like, you're back, baby. Nintendo won you over. Gotta love it, man. I was holding it the other day. I just had this weird moment. Where I just happened to have the Switch in my hand. And I just looked at it and just had this moment where I was like, this thing is amazing. Mm -hmm. It just is. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I don't think, I, I don't feel like the novelty of this thing that you can plug in to your TV, just slot it right in. It's on your TV. Pick it up, take it anywhere. It, st it still feels kind of magical to me. I was playing Wolfenstein on it in yeah. bed. Is it good on the Switch, ago. Wolfenstein? It's good enough. Good enough? Like, it's, one of those things, it's like, it's not the best way to play Wolfenstein. Everybody right. knows that. Right. But you're playing a console quality a full first person shooter, shooter. On a handheld. On a handheld. Yeah. What a time to be alive. I love it. Uh, next news story. GameStop shares some info on post E3 2018 numbers. This comes from James Batchelor at gamesindustry.biz. Uh, some interesting tidbits here that... I feel like our audience would really enjoy. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is expected to be the biggest retail game of the year by far, based on pre-orders. No surprise there. No surprise sure. there. 
Black Ops 4 is doing incredibly well, which GameStop thinks is due to the Battle Royale mode. So they are adding Battle Royale to Black Ops. That's mm -hmm. confirmed. Yeah. And is it, it's, Battle Royale it, type mode. Yeah. It's not 100 players, right? No. I think they said they won't be able to, wouldn't be able to get it up to 100. I don't remember what the, the actual number was. Kind of funny cops last year. I wonder why they think it is due to the Battle Royale mode. I don't know if they're just hearing that kind of anecdotally from people coming into the stores to pre-order. Yeah, it's, it's based on those type of conversations. Okay. And I, it's inter what's interesting about this is based on the Internet's reaction, uh, they were really down on Black Ops 4. And like, oh, it's going to be the one that fails. I guess not. Not this it's year. Life in the old dog yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Switch sales doubled over the course of the week after Nintendo's E3 showing, with Pokemon and especially Smash Bros. seeing huge interest. There's also lots of demand for the Pokeball controller. Okay, so let me stop you there for a second, because there's a moment, there's a thing here where like the two stories, mm -hmm. th these two stories kind of connect, but in, an, in a contradictory way. Switch sales doubled mm -hmm. after the E3, but their the stock, stock went, went down. down. So what's the deal there? Was there something underwhelming about the E3 showing I, I Nintendo? Th I think it's a, it's a fear from investors of... Honestly, it's not understanding how Nintendo presents information. It really demonstrates a disconnect, doesn't it, between those who analyze the market and mm -hmm. the actual consumers because the, the, the retailers... Sorry, the analysts saw that and said, oh, Nintendo, not not good enough. Sorry, let's downgrade you. Yeah. Consumers saw it and said, i got to buy a Switch. So there's I, a massive disconnect. I think the problem is it's when people compare Nintendo to everyone else at E3 and everyone else at E3, Sony, Microsoft, E3 is their place that they give their roadmap for the, next, the rest of the year. That's not Nintendo's style during the last couple of years with directs. They have four or five directs a year that give a little bit of information when they are ready to give the information. I'm kind of surprised that Nintendo even bother with E3. I mean, they're already very successful conduit with the Direct. Mm -hmm. Nintendo is so I kind of classed it. They're like, we don't do what the other guys do. So why even go to E3? Just do your own thing. People, trust me, people are going to tune into your Direct. You don't yeah. need the platform of E3. Well, I think that they're, they've been smart, and like a lot of people gave them shit a couple of years ago for not having a press conference. But yeah. I think it's smart for them to focus on... Uh, the last couple of years, they focused on one game per show. There's a bunch of other stuff that they, they show off, but it's the one big game of E3 to be the talk of E3. We had uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. We had Mario Odyssey. And now this year, we had Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Right. And for them to do the blowout that they did at the Direct, and then their entire booth be Smash Brothers. Like, we, you weren't at E3, were you? No, not this year. The Smash Brothers booth. It was all Smash? Was, it was the talk of the show. Like, everybody wanted to get back there as many times as possible. Right. And Nintendo just has their their, their hooks in, in people, you know? So I feel like the analysts are looking at this, and they're like, oh, well, th that's it for the rest of this year. And then the other story we get, it's like, no, there's... There's another direct coming. I still need you to teach me to play Smash. When this new we one comes out, I yeah. want you to teach me to play Smash Brothers. Because I, I feel like wait. it's a franchise I've always missed out on just because it's so chaotic. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing when I play Smash yeah, Brothers. Yeah, yeah. I, just, it's, it, I just mash the buttons. We can get you there, man. There's just uh, there's one basic move set that you just need to learn, okay. and then you apply it to every other character. Got it. Okay. It's not like Street Fighter where there's like combos and stuff you need to memorize. Right. It's like every character has the same moves. Got it. And it's just so that's good. So once you know the basic set, it. you're good. Then you can okay. just play I'm around give with it a try. you want. It's going to be a good time. But I tell you, between analysts and consumers, I'm going to go with the consumers every time. If the mm. analysts go, or well, no good, and the consumers say, I'm going to buy a Switch after seeing that, trust the consumer every time. Mm -hmm. That's my view. GameStop expects the shift towards September, October instead of November releases to continue into the future because most publishers wanted to do it to enable deeper discounts on Black Friday as opposed to just trying to, jo trying to dodge Red Dead. I mean, there's that as well, isn't there? Everyone's getting the hell out of the way of Red yeah, Dead. Yeah, hell no. Nah. What do you do? I mean, do you, if you were looking at, for the companies that were looking at, what's the Red Dead release date again? Sometime in November? October 26th. So like late October? No, that's not right. So let's say that you were looking at a release date in that window, and then Rockstar come in and they drop that date. Obviously, you've got to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Do you do you do you push it forward? Do you try to get your October game out? October 26th. So let's say that your game was scheduled for that same day. Mm -hmm. Rockstar announces October 26th for Red Dead. Obviously, you're in a company meeting in five minutes. Guys, what are we going to do? What like do we, we, have, do? we can't sit on that date where no one's going to buy. Literally, no one will buy our game. What's nuts do you is bring you, it forward? Do you push it back? Like, what, what did people do in the wake of they, that They pushed forward. So okay. uh, we, we saw something kind of unprecedented this year with Battlefield and Call of Duty where those are November games. You know right. what I mean? Like the right. first week, second week, November, you can rely on that. For... <laughs> Maybe not the first time ever, but for the first time in a very long time, those games are coming out in October. Yeah, because that's the <laughs> like window. Early. Yeah, because once once October 26 hits, for the it's next over. six weeks, no one's playing anything else. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. It's I know be. what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not going to be able to find me. <laughs> 
Uh, GameStop is positive on games as a service because their digital currency business is booming and is now over $1 billion a year. Multiplayer games also drive lots of controller and headset sales. Okay. What's That's, their digital currency business? Do they have like a, like a GameStop Bitcoin or something? What do they have? I don't know. I don't know. Game, GameStop's weird. Remember when GameStop was just a place where you could go and like buy a video game? Yeah. Now, now it's, it's like they've topic. got now they've got cryptocurrency. Now, <laughs> yeah, now it's hot topic. They're selling comic books now. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, they, they've 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 got to adapt, right? Because I can't remember, I can't remember the last time I bought a game on a disc or went into a GameStop because I don't want games on disc anymore. I just yeah. Yeah, it's a hassle. Mm. Like if you've got like more than physical. one game on a disc that you're playing, just you like you like to have. The I disc. like the physical. You don't mind I, all the swappy swappy. Uh, so I I hate the swappy swappy, but I just like the the collecting of it. That that's oh, the you like to have a shelf. I like having the shelf, okay. and I like having all of them. But I as I, the more I think about it now, I'm like I don't even put my games on a shelf. I put them in a drawer. So I'm like yeah. And with the Switch, I love having all of them on one thing portably. So it's like I'm totally digital on Switch. It's going the way of music and movies are getting there as well. You remember when like it just seems weird now to see like a wall of C- like a bit like the CD rack. Mm-hmm. Like here's my here's all my CDs. Yeah. Like, who the hell has CDs? <laughs> like you know, just, these all just fit on you know the, the thing the size of a pack of playing cards. Yeah. And movies are going that way as well. And I think games are you know the, the idea of I I've, I have like my big catalog of of game discs, but they're downstairs like in a mm-hmm. like a library room that is just like you go down there and get a game if you need it. But like we don't have it like out in the living room or anything. Yeah. Uh, GameStop expects we will see more game releases in the April through August window in the future due to how well games are doing outside traditional windows, but that it might take a few years for development schedules to match up with that due to how long games take to make. Interesting. Yeah. I would actually be glad to see that. I would love to see games more evenly spaced out throughout the year because the problem that happens, and we've talked about this many times before, I'm, I'm sure, um, is when all the big holiday releases come out, you know, October, November, Unless you've saved up all your piggy bank money, mm-hmm. and, all, and and even then it becomes an issue of time. Like there's too much good stuff all at once, and you're forced to make some hard choices. I would much rather have, let's say, five hit games that are big games that are released all in November, spaced out like one a month over the previous month. So there's time to actually get to them and spend on them. When every Christmas time, every holiday, there's too much good stuff hitting all at once, mm-hmm. and th- th- this is how we end up with these backlogs. We've seen a shift a little bit into the early. January to March area over right. the last couple of years. With, right. Saw it with Horizon, with Zelda, with uh, Monster Hunter World, Resident Evil 7, um, big games coming yeah, that's out right. earlier. So that's cool. But like, it's it's so interesting to to look at this year now. And there's so many games coming out at all times. And then July is just such a dead month. Like, I don't know what it is, but so, like, well, there's like no kid, big giant games coming out. I in think, July. I think I, maybe it's something to do with kids being out of school and they're actually, they actually are getting out of the house and not playing video games. Hmm. I don't know. I find that hard maybe. to believe. Do, do kids really leave the house anymore? I don't know. That used to be it. Yeah. On summertime, I used to go out and ride my bike. Yeah. But video games were crap then. Yeah. Now they're awesome. <laughs> now they're now awesome. I don't want to ride my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of video games being awesome, uh, the last news story. Uh, Famitsu is the first scored review of Octopath Traveler, and they gave it a 36 out of 40 with four scores of nine. Uh, so that sounded really good for that game. I'm very excited and cannot wait to play it in a couple days. Do you have any interest in it? I've never heard of it. What is it? Project Octopath Traveler? No. Oh, I I've, I've, I've missed it. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing catch up. Just so you understand like where I am. Yeah. Right now, I'm playing Detroit Beyond Human. Mm-hmm. Which has been I out have. for a while, mm-hmm. but I'm finally now getting to yeah. it. I don't play games when they're cool. Like mm. I, they, 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 a little bit after they, they become like one a couple of months back, then I'll finally get to them. So I finally got a copy of Detroit Beyond Human Planet. Really liking it actually. Uh-huh. Um, and the biggest thing is, so I saw some of the stuff at E3, but I didn't see everything. I finally stumbled. And I was just like bouncing around YouTube the other day, and mm-hmm. I was like, "What the hell? What, what's this thing? Tetris effect?" Two minutes later. Never wanted anything more in my entire life, <laughs> dude. Great dude have Kevin, you seen this thing? Tetris effect, it and they fucking love it. It's like Tetris meets fucking Res. Yeah, like Luminous, you cannot. Yeah. That's like the peanut butter, ultimate peanut butter and jelly of video games. Because <laughs> I fucking love Res, and I yeah. really like Tetris. Put those, and I watched the preview. I watched mm-hmm. some videos of people playing it. I'm like, I gotta have this fucking game. I gotta yeah. have it. That's the awesome. The music is beautiful. So the, the, the the aesthetics look fucking great. I mean, considering seriously getting a, P- a PlayStation VR headset just for because that, the VR just for mode, the people are saying the best yeah. way to play it looks hot yeah it looks really awesome i'm Kevin really really a into huge fan big of big big it. into tetris effect um so project octopath traveler yeah was, tell me about it that. was announced uh when with the switch reveal last january oh it's a switch title yeah okay. switch title uh made by square it's in the style of old school final fantasy games so hmm. it's like classic uh pixel based uh jrpgs 
Are you a JRPG guy at all? Uh, I wasn't until I played Persona 5, and that was my kind of gateway mm. drug into it, and now I do like it. Cool, Greg. Would it be possible for you to go to YouTube and pull up a video? Yeah, let's take a look at this thing. You need to see it. Because whether what's the, or not what's, what's special about it? The the graphic style. Oh, it looks like a unique is, graphic style. It's utterly amazing. Let's check it out. Uh, Octopath. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, the top one. Um, and what are then we looking at? Do, we look at the, the trailer. The E3 trailer. E3 trailer. Third yeah. one down. Third one down. And then just right, pop it up so out. people can see it. Okay, so it's got a got a kind of eight bit. 16 bit kind of uh it's 16 bit style to it but with uh like the cinematic lighting right and it's just like i've never seen anything like this it's beautiful and it's getting a good reviews so and I, it's coming out soon yeah it's coming out uh, like next week i think Pull but this look, this list, it looks yeah. like it has a very old school kind mm -hmm. of chrono trigger earthbound yeah. kind of vibe to it i'm so excited for it man and this is a full fat game this I is mean, is it like an indie or is yep, it like a no, big deal this is a full okay. made it's by from square, square. yeah that's great. This is your and this is your vibe. This is your kind of thing. This oh, kind of game. I'm so into this, man. This right. looks awesome. It looks good. Thank you, Cool Greg. It looks good. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a while until I get to get my hands on that. But if I want to know what games are coming out today, Gary, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts, each and every weekday. Now I'm gonna guess that this is not a big day for. Oh, sorry. No, game releases. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. It's not. Um, out today, we got Gnome's Garden 3, The Thief of Castles on Xbox One. And that sounds like a cool Greg-ass game if I ever heard of it. <laughs> uh, we got Nico Para Volume 1 on Switch. And then we got What the Box on Xbox One. Now, what is What the Box? Do so you know what that is? I asked the same question you did, Gary. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to look this up. So I Googled it. Okay. What the Box looks like the coolest fucking game I've ever oh, seen. Oh, really? Let's pull that we, one up. I want to see this too. Pull up What the Box, Greg. What the Box. I love I love that we can just pull this stuff up. This game actually looks great. Uh, do which like, one is it? Type in trailer. What the box trailer? Let's check it out. Okay, here we are. Yeah. Okay, let's check it out. And give me give me some music on this one. VR title? No. And so it's boxes with 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 knives. So, so everyone a plays a box, a cardboard box. Your, your boxes. And it, you need to hide and blend in with the other boxes and then go and try oh. to kill people. So you, you hide so, and try okay, to blend. Okay, so you could be on, so someone could be under any of the, mm -hmm. any one of those boxes. Because mm -hmm. they all look the same. Yep. And then you and then you fight each other with knives, it looks like. Yeah, with box cutters. So it's like Boxel Royale. Uh-huh. This is Put crazy. it on the box. <laughs> Thank you. All right, okay. Why anyway, not? This looks, and this just looks, came out today yeah. on Xbox One. Uh -huh. And it looks fucking awesome. I was watching a Let's Play of it. I'm just like, it looks like chaos. Because it's like, just imagine all of us playing. Nick hiding there as a goddamn box moving around. And us needing to find which one of the boxes he is. And you have limited ammo. This could be genius. Yeah. I might it have sounds to, like I, a lot of fun. You know, July 4th, a lot of these games are going to fly under the radar. But that one I might have to take a look at. What the box. What the box. Uh, new dates. SNK 40th Anniversary Collection is coming to Switch on November 13th. Uh, it has over 14 games in it. That one's for Jared Petty, I'm sure. Uh, deals of the day, the 8-Bitto SN30 for Windows, Mac, Android, and Switch is only $44 on Amazon. What it's is that? The, control, the SNES controller? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's my favorite Switch controller that, okay. I, that I own. I fucking love oh, it's this a thing. Swiss, it's, a, it's a Switch controller, but it looks like a Super NES controller. Yep. Uh, okay. But you also get, the, you get analog and you get the shoulder buttons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it is so amazing. This is, this is Does the, it have the, the tilt and everything in it? Mm -hmm. It okay. has everything. You can uh, connect it with, via USB-C if you want it to be wired. Otherwise, it's Bluetooth. I might have to get this Dude, thing. Dude, you should. It's awesome. They also make it in... Uh, in the the PAL version, and it's as well. wireless. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So it'll just it'll just connect to the switch like a regular controller. Yep, I like I like it. And you can, you can get it. You can use it with your Super Nintendo Classic if you wanted to. The I NES actually Classic. need a fourth controller. This if might be this might be the thing. way to go. For this me. is the way to go. All I, right. When I travel with my, Switch. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna order this the minute we're off the air. I'm gonna get that. What's uh, it? It says it's forty four dollars. What is it usually at? It's usually fifty. So okay. it's not like it's that. Bucks. It's not that big of a, a savings. But yeah, but I the, could then go get a Happy Meal with that extra. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be it's a good a big time. difference. Um, but when I travel, I bring my Switch. I bring a little stand, and I bring this controller. Like this is my. This so, is so what this I is use as a your, Pro controller. You would you would use that over the official Pro controller, over the pro which controller. is a great controller. It is. I, I this one has the. What do you like about it? It's it's the actual buttons from a Super Nintendo. So you like you just like the. Feel? I, I love it. it. That controller just feels so good. 
And like with this, the analog sticks are great. The one thing, and I, I, I'm sure I've mentioned it on the show before, because it's one of my favorite things in video game industrial design, and it's the one, the Famicom and the UK version of the Super Nintendo didn't have this. The yeah. concave buttons. The two of the buttons are convex and two are concave. These have that. And so that's just by touch, mm -hmm. just, just by feel, right. you know where you know where the button is. Mm -hmm. Such a such a clever little design. I don't know why that didn't get picked. It was only ever in that generation. Only in America. And only on the American yeah. one. But I thought so it was a really clever touch. This 8-bit dough uh, controller, you can get either version. You can oh. get it with the, the concave or I want or this not. though, I yeah. want this. Yeah, it's good. It's damn good. Because I like the lavender, you know, the, the US color. I, thought, I always thought that the um, that the American version of the of the Super Nintendo was really ugly compared to the Japanese and the European versions, the Let Famicom stop version. stop right there, Gary. It looked we like a, a cinder block. We got a question from Dan W. Okay. If the planets have aligned, then Tim and Gary are back together. This is the perfect two sides of the coin team to answer my question. Okay, What's the it. best looking Super Nintendo console? Oh. European versus America versus Japan. Well, what do you like? I like the American one. I know it's that just, it's, like, it's just all hard the colors, edges. And though, it's also my first console. I do like the lavender and the and the purple. My thing is, I, I the, think the Super or the, the PAL version looks nicer for the console. Yeah. I just hate the colors on the controller. No, they're just the bright colors. And Andy loves them. Andy fucking stands by that. It looks, it looks more childish, I guess, the Famicom. I don't have a problem with that. I would say that I like the Famicom base unit better, mm -hmm. but I like the... Um, the uh, U.S. Control. controller, yeah. I just love the color scheme of it, man. The lavender, purple, and gray. It's like, oh, it's so hot. It was a, it was a high point, I think. The Super Nintendo. Um, if you're going to do the three greatest Nintendo consoles of all time, mm -hmm. where would you put the Super Nintendo on that list? Oh, I mean, that's number one. I mean, we'll have to see where the Switch ends up. It's, I mean, I, I think the Switch is already in a conversation about yeah. the best three Nintendo consoles ever made. I think right now it's still Super Nintendo. There's just too many. I would do Super Nintendo, NES, Switch, like historically. What else? What, I mean, what? I wouldn't put an N64 in there. I certainly wouldn't put no. GameCube in there, no, no, or no, either no. of the Wii's. So that's kind of it. Boys. Yeah. I would go. DS, I would go Super. DS had a really good lineup. I, I would do a separate list for the handhelds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think for the base units, and again, Switch is confusing, right? Because it's both. Yeah. Um, but I would go Super Nintendo, NES, and I think Switch has got to be in any conversation. I think that if the Switch continues to have levels of success similar to what they did with Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, what they're looking to have with Smash and going forward, the next Pokemon, all that, I think Switch is going to end up being Switch my is, And Switch one. is not going anywhere anytime soon. I think it's going right. to go from strength to strength. But the Super Nintendo's library, come on. What do you think Nintendo does next? For hardware, do they just double down on the switch? Is it I just like a so. more powerful switch? I hope that's the because they've the tried case. something radically different each time. But when you hit on something that is so successful, mm -hmm. it feels like you would you wouldn't reinvent the wheel again. You would just maybe just just do like the Xbox One version of the switch. Like here's here's more power, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that's what I want. All right, uh, and then the last deal of the day: fifty percent all Twitch merch for Amazon Prime members. I know a lot of people out there love those Twitch hoodies. So oh, if you're yeah. interested, go to Amazon Prime. Uh, and now it's time for Reader Mail, brought to you by Marvel Puzzle Quest. Marvel Puzzle Quest is one of Greg's favorite games of all time, and he gets to play it on his phone now. I'm a big fan of it, too. Yeah? Oh, you should check this out, then. Uh, we have a special offer for new players out there. You can download Marvel Puzzle Quest using the link in the description, or head over to www.d3go.com slash kindoffunnygames and get yourself three free tokens from the Partners in Crime Vault to possibly earn Ant-Man, Wasp, or other great rewards to add to your collection. Uh, Marvel Puzzle Quest is Marvel's only match-three puzzle RPG experience available on mobile devices. Uh, it's free, so that's a real nice thing for, for cheap people out there. Uh, it's more than 150 characters available. Talent can use examples uh, like Ant-Man. So guess what? Ant-Man and the Wasp, the movie coming out this week? You're going to be able to play as those It's guys. one of the cool things that they do is whenever there's like a big Marvel movie, Puzzle mm -hmm. Quest will sync up their content and introduce like, you know, like so th when they did Infinity War, like Thanos was mm -hmm. a big deal and Ant-Man now, you know, Ant-Man and Wasp will be a big deal. Let's see, we got all the, the characters from Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ant-Man, Wasp, Ghost, and there's going to be related events and supports going on. And like I said, there's a special offer for new players, three free tokens from the Partners in Crime Vault to help you get started in the game. Go to d3go.com slash kindoffunnygames to check that out and download Marvel Puzzle Quest using the link in the description. And uh, tweet at me, at Tim Gettys. Let me know how you're doing when you get your Ant-Man in Marvel Puzzle Quest. Thank you. Reader mail time. What you got? Read a mail. 
Aiden Dean writes in and says, should I get Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy if I've never played the originals? I'm in the market for a good Switch game and I'm very tempted to get the Insane Trilogy. The only problem is I've heard people say that they're not really good games and I would not have no nostalgia for the originals except for Crash Bandicoot Tag Team Racing. So should I go for it or should I pass on this one? The most I've ever played Crash Bandicoot is in Uncharted 4. <laughs> you know when you get to play it for like two minutes? There's a reaction As video. Nathan Drake. Like, you, you know this about me. I'm a big Crash Bandicoot fan. I didn't know that about you. Really? I didn't know you were a Crash fan. Really? No. I mean, I... I That's I, like I, the one thing people know about no, me. No, I know you like Smash Brothers. I do. I do. I, that was the, I think that's the one thing I knew about you. Okay, I need to show you my reaction video when they announced no, <laughs> Crash, Crash was in Uncharted. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, the no, Insane the, Trilogy? The, the okay. Insane Trilogy. I lost my mind. Okay. Um, and similarly, when uh, Crash was in Uncharted, Greg told me, he's like, Tim, there's a part. When you see... Nathan Drake sit on the couch and go to turn on the TV. Yeah. Stop playing the game. Turn a camera on yourself and record your reaction. Right. And I lost and you my did that? mind. Oh, you yeah. You did that? Oh, yeah, I gotta that's watch available. I, I, that video I have to see. Yeah. Uh, I love that. But yeah, Crash Bandicoot is, I talked about this a little bit with Jared. They're not great games, but they're, they're still good games. And if you like platformers, I totally recommend getting this. Do There's you go all the way back to like PlayStation 1 with, uh, with, Crash? with Crash? Oh, yeah. It's worth, where so, you got to go. <laughs> I always think it's... I struggled with Crash Bandicoot back in the day. He always struck me as like the Poochie mm -hmm. of, of, of video game mascots. Like they were trying to create, self, very self-consciously create something that was cool. Possible. He's like, hey, you know, like, that's cool. That I loved like, it. See, my thing is I feel like people have the wrong read of Crash Bandicoot. <coughs> okay, the, tell me about it. The cool, what you're talking about, that's Sonic. Sonic, that way was too definitely cool. Sonic. I'm cooler than you, Mario. Yes. Crash Bandicoot's more Looney Tunes than cool. Like I feel like in a lot okay. of the, in a lot of the marketing uh, in the commercials and stuff, they made him have sunglasses and they made him kind of what you're right. talking about. Right. But in terms of the games, like he's not he's not like that. He's not like Diddy Kong with his fucking guitar. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he is. It's, it's not way, all about attitude. It's way more Looney Tunes. Okay, I get that. I always think though, it's I, I always think it's kind of the ultimate. It's the saddest indictment of the failure of a of a, of a platform specific mascot. When they start showing up on other platforms, and hey, now Nintendo's just winning. The second they, they, you, now you can play Crash. Sega on the yeah, I know, right? Now, Nintendo just has everyone, and, yeah. and, and no one, no one else has Mario. Yeah, you, you can you imagine ever seeing Mario show up on like Xbox. the PlayStation? My God. Ain't happening. No, but all the pretenders to the crown: uh -huh. Sonic, Crash, fucking Bubsy, you name it. <laughs> At the end of the day, they all bent the knee. They all bent the knee to Nintendo <laughs> and went and joined Mario. Oh my God. And now you can enjoy them too. I recommend you get it. Forty dollars, you get all three of the Crash games. There's a lot of content there, and uh, Crash One is going to be really frustrating because it's it gets super hard and the difficulty spikes are unreal. Um, two and three kind of solve that a bit. All of them have a lot of flaws, but so what do you get uh, in this trilogy? What are the what are the three games? It's Crash One, Crash Two, Crash Three. Okay, remastered. Okay, it doesn't yeah. include the racing game. No. Okay, got it. Unfortunately, got it. Um. Raul6041 says, what's up, guys? I had a question about Spider-Man. I'm extremely excited about it, but the mechanics seem very similar to the movie tie-in games, like the, the combat, swinging, and web zipping. Uh, it's very similar to Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Why is nobody bringing this up in their previews? Also, what superhero would you guys want to have their own game? Thanks for everything you guys do. Hashtag Nick is a fogey. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, Spider-Man is the hero that I'd want to get their own game, so I'm very excited about this. Having played it, it's different than the movie tie-in games. All the movie tie-in games kind of had that that cheap feeling to them. There was just like a level of production value of the game that just didn't feel right. right. Spider-Man 2 on the PS2 was fucking amazing. We all know it. But And like the physics-based swinging, that was great. There's something cinematic about playing this game that is just breathtaking. When you hit the apex of a swing and just jump, like you feel it in you. Uh, playing this game and I and the combat is, is so much more Arkham style where it's like quick and fast and it just makes you feel like a badass. In a That's way always that been I think the did. toughest thing to get right in a Spider-Man type game and obviously the early uh, the earlier games could never even get close to it. Now we have the technology to get closer to it and it sounds like they're getting there. That exhilaration of swinging between buildings and really feeling like you're doing that. that mm -hmm. th th this game is, is getting close to achieving that. It's it oh I mean it achieves it. Adding in the running on the walls and the the amount of context sensitive uh like quick time events and things that you can do uh based on like there's a car going by right and, and you can like go underneath the car at the right time it feels like you're playing the movie right um but it also doesn't feel too scripted and i feel like when you watch the demo a lot of people are like oh it's just quick time events it it you are in control of the the movement and the momentum and it almost starts feeling like a rhythm game going through oh cool uh, and yeah man i'm 
I is it? Did, have they put a date on this yet? Spider Man, yeah, September twenty first. Okay, cool. That's not too far out. Yeah, I was talking to John Drake about it at prom. I know he's like a he's obviously a Sony guy, but he mm -hmm. was uh, you know just the two of us talking. He was like really high on it. He thinks it's gonna be great. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. I I feel like in a year that uh, God of War came out, that's the only thing really holding it back from being the like Sony crown jewel of the year. But God, what a year this is. Did you play God of War yet? I've played like the first couple of hours of it. Okay. okay. And I liked it. The tone of it was a little bleak for me, mm -hmm. but I obviously I, I'm tremendously admiring of everything. I mean, it's obviously a, a masterpiece. It's, yeah. I, and I do want to get back to yeah. finishing it. But right now the uh, in the house, it's all, uh, we're, we're going back and forth between uh, Detroit, Beyond Human, mm -hmm. which I'm actually really liking. Uh, and um, Last of Us Remastered, which we're finally getting around to finishing in anticipation of the, the second one coming oh, out. Wait, but you, I haven't, will, you haven't beat it before? I never finished The Last of Us. Oh, that's man. one of my secret shames. Well, wow. I'm not so and secret that, anymore. You're, you're doing it right now, yeah, playing yeah, through it. Yeah, but I, I feel like we're playing it through in the best way now. Like Remastered on the PS4 Pro mm -hmm. looks gorgeous. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the way to play it. Let's see. I only, I only want to do one more. I okay. want to end this one pretty early. Uh, Rusty writes in and says, Hi, KFGD crew. With the news at the end of last week about Google looking to enter the gaming space, it got me thinking, how could they crack the big three and make enough of a splash to gain a foothold in the market? And one thing came to mind, Valve and Steam. A few months ago, when people questioned if Microsoft would look at acquiring them to bolster their first party, I didn't think much of it. But with Google needing to find a way to establish themselves, what better way than with an already well-known platform in Steam and access to highly desirable IP? Just curious to what you guys think about this possibility or how else they may be able to gain their foothold in the market well i mean what would what would google do with that if they if suddenly yeah tomorrow they they were the owners of valve and steam what would they do to get into the console market or into the gaming i mean make steam boxes again that already didn't work yeah i'm not quite sure what they would do i, I guess maybe they wouldn't build hardware maybe they would just be a software uh platform. well it sounds like they're trying to get in here in a in a hardware space do you think there's room for more hardware I don't think so, but I also didn't think that there was with the Xbox, and look where they're at. Well, I mean, you know, they're, they're barely getting by these days sometimes, Xbox. I mean, you know, they're, they're doing good, don't get me wrong, but I feel like whatever space was, was left, mm -hmm. I mean, when, when's the last time there were four major platforms? I don't know. Has there ever been? No, I don't think no, so. No, there's always been like little extra ones around the periphery, but there's only ever been, you know, Xbox took it to three and it maxed out. Mm -hmm. who, who else is going to get into that space? I mean, we've seen, you know, um, what was the terrible one that came along? Uh, the the Android based one that they kickstarted. Ooh, yeah. Ooh yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on now. But I mean, Google though. Google's different. They have money. They, they have, have the serious. Infrastructure. I they mean, have... that's the that's the thing. It's like you know what you reminded me of the other day. I saw that um, I was at Target and they had that bubbly uh, carbonated water. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I said, "Who the hell thinks?" There's room in the in the in the in the flavored carbonated water market right <laughs> got now it covered, with, guys. with Lacroix and everything else that's out there. There's so many different brands. Who, who where's the room? And I picked up and it said like bottled by, it's either Coke or Pepsi that makes it. That's how you do it. Mm. You just muscle your way in. Totally with billions of dollar ad spend, and you just you know, and you use your um, relationship with Target and Walmart and said, yeah, you're gonna run, you're gonna put us right up front. Yeah, because we're Coke or we're Pepsi, whoever they are. Um, maybe that's what I mean. Google could strong arm their way in as well. Apple could. Any number yeah. of companies could. And the thing about Xbox is like maybe they're not winning the the race right now, but it doesn't matter because they're still in like a better place than they've ever been. Video games are just making more money than ever, so yeah. it's like even losing, rising you're still tide winning. lifts all boats. And I do think that they they had a very good E three showing, and I think they're going to be I think they're going to be good. But Xbox Xbox is still my platform of of choice, um, and I do think they are um, starting to make up the difference in terms of quality exclusives and yeah i actually really like that question i think we're gonna take that and turn it into a games cast topic to expand more so maybe maybe this week stay tuned now it's time to squad up can you read the squad up yeah while i get the you're wrong ready sure squad up george is on ps4 he says, I've been playing Fortnite for a while, but I only have two friends to play with. Oh, this is going to make me sad. So always at a disadvantage in squads with randos. So please, can I get some of the best friends to play with me and carry me to the Victory Royale and have some fun along the way? Um, and George's PS4 username is G-Man with two N's. So G-M-A-N-N -N 1982. G-Man, G-M-A-N-N -N 1982. So if you're looking to play Fortnite... 
with someone. Maybe you're in a similar position to George. You don't want to play with randos because you don't ever. You want to you Fortnite and, and Battlegrounds. Those are the kind of games where you've got to have four players in a squad talking to each other, mm -hmm. communicating, working as a team. If you try to play with randoms, you're going to die. Gonna you gonna ain't going to get time. no chicken are you, dinners. Are you playing uh, Fortnite? No, I'm still a Battlegrounds guy. Do they have yeah. chicken dinners in Fortnite? Because no, that's No, what, no, what do no. they serve Victory over there? Victory Royale. Victory Royale. What is that, mm -hmm. like a burger or something? Uh, Andy <laughs> thinks that it's tacos. <laughs> Victory Royale with cheese. Yeah. Taco Royale. Um, no, I'm still a Battlegrounds guy, but I did install it on my Xbox and I am going to check it out. You're playing it, right? Are you a Fortnite fan? I'm not. I mean, oh, I, you're not. I, I this is more of a Greg thing. I, literally everyone else in the office but me is playing. Why are you, why are you holding out? I don't out? know. I'm don't just, you want to be, I, well, play with the cool The kids? answer is prom. Okay. I've been playing. They're all fucking playing while I was planning shit. Fair enough. Um, now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you can write in, let us know what we got wrong during the show. I looked at it and I was like, oh, there's like not many. And then it refreshed and just suddenly we got everything. There's wrong. a whole bunch. Let's see. Um, what did we get wrong, Tim? Garrick says the Bluetooth coffee mug requires driver updates because the phone app requires an update due to the phone iOS updating. It's a vicious cycle, but a necessary one to maintain compatibility. I just want my coffee. There's the last thing. The last thing to get in the way oh. of is my coffee in the morning. Yeah. I want my coffee. If I've got to update my firmware, you're not going to want to be this, talking to me. It's going to be bad. I mean, we walked in today and it's like, there's just nothing that makes you more angry than the coffee machine not working because you just need that fucking that I mean, crack. just just on a general thing, like the whole business of everything now, like I know that if I haven't turned on my console in a, in a month or two, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be... Play so yesterday, for example, I literally turned on my PC... I wasn't thinking about playing games, but I know I hadn't played in a while. I might want to soon, but I thought while I, while I'm here, let me just turn it on Let's and update get everything. Get, get out them out of the way. way so that I don't have. And, and it ended up being half a day to do all the windows because I hadn't turned it on in a while. So all the Windows updates and then Steam needs to update. Yeah. It needs to update. Nvidia needs to update its graphic drivers. Then it has to update all the and games. Then nothing's gonna work. They're all gonna fuck each other. Nope. And it's gonna be like God. Damn, it's a man. half a day before this I'm actually playing This latest Windows 10 update is a disaster. Oh. It broke everything. It you broke know, our studio. The week before, did it really, dude? The entire computer just shat the bed because my Windows updates thing, aren't compatible. My favorite thing is when Windows decides it needs to update immediately and is going to shut down, and you're in the middle of doing something. Mm -hmm. What is that? <sighs> Come on, Bill Gates, dude, step it up. Seriously, he'll never, never, he'll never amount to anything at this rate. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Uh, Dennis Lofgreen says Yoshi Switch has been delayed to 2019. Oh my goodness. Reggie and Bill have said it's been delayed, and the developers wanted more time to polish the game. Oh, okay, I forgot about that. You know what? Uh, you know what? I, I just remembered. I was going to talk about it during the Nintendo conversation. Maybe it's because of the World Cup. But you know what? I also want. I really want Switch hmm? Super Mario Strikers. Can we get it? Could we get that? Can we get it? That Could is my get favorite that? Mario sports game it's of my, all time. Mine too. And what it's a party so mode! Good. Oh my god. We got. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Because I, I want to bust up, out the GameCube for that one. I picked up Mario Tennis, and I got it. I don't regret getting it, but mm -hmm. nor am I super thrilled that I got it. It's kind of like it's all right. I hate the story mode. Yeah, I don't like the story. It's wanna, really bad. I want to play tennis. I don't want to beat up Piranha Plants. But that's the thing is, like, if you just give up on that bullshit yeah. and play the tournament mode, it's such a good game. So I should just play tournament just mode. Don't right, even worry tip. with the story mode. It's, good tip. it's dumb. It's a waste Playing of time. four players online is a ton of fun. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a great game. The strikers, I, 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 We need strikers. When was the last strikers? Game Wii. There was a... I think there was one on Was Wii. it Wii, Wii 1? Or, you know, just, just vanilla Wii? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Super. Because... Um, I, I, I almost want to say GameCube, but that can't be right. It might be. What do you think? Because it was like supercharged. Yeah, we. It was on it Wii. It was on Wii? Okay, so we've skipped a generation. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the time. I would I, even just take a deluxe yes, at seriously. this point. Just I'll give say, me the I game. Just give me it. I, I love the style of the game. It's the only time you see Mario angry. <laughs> you know? Like, everyone's all, like, super intense about it. Usually the sports games are all like, hey. We're happy right. Mario Party. Right. Nah, man, they're like, we're about to fuck I you want up. Super, if anyone out there from Nintendo is listening, give us Mario Strikers on the Switch. Capitalist Pig says, Black Ops 4 Battle Royale mode. The Battle Royale mode is called Blackout and it has no official number as of yet. Okay. Speculation is since they're refusing to give a number, it'll be less than 100. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Garrick says, regarding GameStop's digital currency, this is in reference to PSN and Xbox currency cards, not cryptocurrency. Oh, I understand. Okay. Um, but I, I think I remember reading something about games, like even Burger King's getting into making their own cryptocurrency. What is going on? Burger King? Burger King was going to do their own crypto. Of course they I were. don't get it. Uh, Air Gamer says, Octopath Traveler's getting released on July 13th, so not in a long time. It's a long time for me. Uh, George just says, inject Tim and Gary Games Daily into my veins. Well, we will. <laughs> we will. Um, what else you got? Anything else? Were we wrong about anything else? I thought we asked a lot of questions. Spider-Man comes out on September 7th. Okay. Says Randy Stacks. 
It's not far away at all. And that's it. We did it. That'd be gold we soon. Did a pretty good job. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Thank you very much for all of your support. Tomorrow, it's going to be me and Jared, and that is going to be a damn good time. Gary, this has been an absolute pleasure. I always, like I said, always enjoy hosting with you, Tim. It's always so a fun. pleasure. It's always fun. Until next time, I love you. <laughs>